Hi folks, here are eight pretty good fusion tips and tricks. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. All right, number one. When we were doing this injection mold, I stumbled for a minute on how to cut this radius right here. Originally thinking it would be maybe a 2D contour or a trace, and then I remembered pencil. Pencil's a great operation. I've used it in the past for things like fillets at the bottom of a pocket. It's really good for following those. It's also perfect for something like this. This happens to be a 3 uh, radi or diameter slot. 3D pencil, 3 16 ball end mill, and under geometry, pick my zone, click OK, and you can see it hugs along that and actually goes into a couple of the other areas, which is fine here. Now, a couple of things. One is that I don't like the fact that this is plunging and entering the toolpath into the solid stock. Why not have it come in down here outside of the model that I don't have to plunge? Right click, edit, the last tab linking, entry positions, just click this point. Uh, actually, anywhere out here should work. Click OK. Awesome. That updates it. But if you look, it's still going to plunge about half the tool straight down. So let's add a lead in. Linking. I can never remember, but I think it's vertical lead in radius. Boom. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, when we went to machine this, I had a hard time with tool containment. And I thought. The way to do it would be just to create a sketch like this, just a box of line or draw lines around the part to contain my 3D tool paths to that area. I did that because creating that single sketch meant I could click on one thing and it instantly gave me my box. That was a lot easier than sometimes I felt like you had to click all these little, little parts and zones and drag around and I, I just thought that was the easier way to do it. Here's the right way. Awesome. Thank you to Al for this trick. It's easier to look at do this when you're normal to the part. In this case, I'm looking at it straight down on the back view. Hover over your part, say like right here, and see I get most of it. Click once, and it goes green or lime green. There's missing two areas though. This area right here and this area right here. Click on the green line once, and it goes black. Good. Now hover your mouse over this area here and see how it automatically recognizes what I want to do, which is to sort of change the path we're taking. Click on that, click once, and scroll down here. Same thing, isn't that awesome? Click once. I've done this on a few things now, and really you only usually have to click uh, one or two things to get that fixed out. You'll notice I also click that green arrow to accept the, the current contour. That's really important to lock that settings in. On that note, this is the first time I'd ever cut an injection mold and I was playing around with the best 3D strategies and scallop seems to be the most popular. But Al was mentioning try pencil. So this is interesting. If I just do a pencil with a 1 32nd finish ball end mill, it's a really small tool. And let's click same same containment trick we just went over. I just click OK. You're going to see that that pencil toolpath comes in here and it cleans up little inside fillets and corners. Perfect. That's normally what I want pencil to do. If I right click and edit, go to passes. You can say step over. Let's just say five thousandths. We can say inside out, if you take a look, you want it to start in the middle and work its way out. And then number of step overs, you just put in a big enough number to ensure that if you go, in this case, 100 step overs at 5 thousandths per, you're going to reach the outside perimeter of your part. The toolpath containment won't let it go beyond that. Click OK and check this out. It renders or calculates really quickly and it's a beautiful toolpath. This is crazy. I love this. Now, how is that better than scallop? I can't tell you. If somebody knows, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. Uh, I think it has to do with how it handles some of the steeper 
walls and how it projects that toolpath down or handles the, uh, just the next step over. All right, a zoom trick. When you're in a view like this or say all the way out here and you wanna get back to a zoom to fit, double click the mouse wheel. One, two, boom. Automatically does a zoom to fit to the screen. Uh, going back to the scallop and pencil with toolpath containment, I had the chance to meet Rob Lockwood at a uh, the IMTS Infusion Feedback Seminar. Rob has a channel here called Rob Lockwood, and I'll put a card to his video right here. Rob is awesome guy, really knows his stuff. He's posted a few videos on HSM Works, but it's the same cam as Fusion 360. So if you want to learn some really, really cool advanced uh, cam stuff, the one I happen to like the most was this uh, guide to using machining boundaries. But his other two videos are great as well, and we're all pushing Rob to make more. Uh, but one of the things he explains really well is what it means under geometry to have uh, contact point boundary, and it's actually a really important thing. So uh, thanks to Rob to putting those videos out and definitely subscribe to his channel. All right, number six. I'm glad that Fusion has better measuring, but I still don't love it. And one of the things I want to do so often as a machinist is just measure the distance between, let's say, this face and this face. And the points that it come up, they're great for some things, but most of the time I just want to know the difference between those two faces. Hold down shift. Who knew? If you hold down shift, it takes away all your specific nuances, and now you know the distance between there is one eighth of an inch. Simulation, when you're trying to get really nitpicky, simulate, turn your stock off, show all toolpaths, and one of the things that's really helpful is you can click on a toolpath, and it'll place the tool right there. So I can see, I learned this from Rob's videos actually, there we go. It's a little bit glitchy or sensitive. So you can see exactly where the toolpath is contacting. If you want an even better view, come down here to your display settings, visual style, wireframe, and you're going to be able to see just exactly how that tool is, uh, is interacting with the solid model. So clicking on toolpaths can be a really helpful thing, especially when you're trying to troubleshoot, you know, a really tight radius or inside pocket, so forth. Okay, bear with me on this last trick. I'm excited for this, but it's a little tricky to pull off. Simulation. So everybody knows that uh, simulation is great. I love it. It's very useful. I trust it. But it doesn't always give you the highest quality graphics. And, and I always thought, you know, that's kind of okay. That's just, you know, it's this isn't a... Um, it's a CAD and CAM package. It's not meant in this case to give you render quality simulations of your toolpath, um, whether that's software, graphics card, or whatever. Al showed me a trick. It's really interesting. If you go to fast mode instead of standard, uh, and the difference there, by the way, is in fast mode, it does what's called a pin down approach. So it's, it's not going to be able to simulate things like undercuts because it's literally just pushing down pins and finding out where the stock is being removed. So think about, have you ever seen one of those plates that has a 10 million little wires in it and you like say push your face into it and it leaves an impression of your face. That's what uh, fast mode is. Here's the trick though, and I think I have to pause my screen recording software because it doesn't play well with this, but right click, stock, zoom stock. So it's not going to do it for me here. Let me pause the screen recording software. Take a look what it does. It reduces the size of your stock only for the purposes of the simulation to a smaller grid, but it uses the same number of pins. So it's effectively increasing the resolution. Um, I don't know about switching the quality, but I assume going higher can't hurt. And then you can render through it and you can zoom in, turn off our component, and you're going to get a higher quality render and simulation. I'll be honest, I've been playing with this and I'm, it's kind of hard to A-B it. I probably should snap some screenshots and try to really test it more. But if you really are trying to look at something, I thought that was an interesting hack and it's always kind of fun to learn how stuff works. So hope you guys learned something. Uh, we're always looking for good tips and tricks. If you've got some, please love to send them our way. Otherwise, take care, folks. See you next Friday. Mm -hmm.